Yes. Good afternoon, Bu Cyrus. Um, traditionally, the mayor uh, addresses city council uh, and the city actually with a what's called a state of the city, um, and this is my I believe my maybe my seventh state of the city, um, and uh, I'd like today to uh, present some of the highlights. Uh, looking back on what happened in 2020, and that uh, was a very eventful year, and looking forward in 2021 and beyond. This year, my state of the city is uh, twice as long as any state of the city that I've written. There's a lot to talk about. Rest assured that I'm not going to read it verbatim, because it would take you know about maybe 20, 30 minutes to do, and I know that's a long time. But I I'm going to give you the highlights now, and then... Uh, for the entire address, it'll be placed on the city website, as, uh, and this will also be on YouTube. So check on the city website, and you can read. That goes into a lot greater detail. But 20, uh, here it is February 18th. It's Thursday, uh, 2021. Last year was an incredible year. I know that sounds like it's a, a very obvious statement, but uh, it's unlike no other in the history of Bucyrus. Uh, at least in our modern history, the, probably the closest thing to it would have been over 100 years ago uh, when the Spanish flu hit in 1917, so, which was a very difficult time too. Um, the coronavirus uh, was, a, a year ago at this time, was a word that was just kind of creeping into our vernacular and uh, uh, we were watching it uh, as it developed in China and uh, it wasn't too long after this time that uh, we saw the first cases uh, locally. and. Uh, made life very difficult for us uh, in the business community and, and as well as uh, as our residents and trying to keep safe. Uh, boy, it was all new grounds for us and worried about keeping our health. And at that time, we really didn't know a lot about it. Boy, fast forward a year and uh, made some tremendous progress. Uh, we've had a lot of heartache in the last year. Uh, here at City Hall, we've known quite a few people in our city uh, workers that have developed COVID. Fortunately, we haven't lost any of them, but we did have some that were very, very sick. Chief Kepke was the first back in uh, April and uh, we were very worried about him. Um, he was sick for a couple of weeks and uh, was actually in our offices too. So we kind of had to quarantine ourselves. So um, Mr. Wagner had it later, had a very bad case and uh, we had several other members uh, that had it too, but uh, a lot of the terms that came into our vocabulary were uh, um, stop the spread, slow the spread, social distancing, sanitizing, mask wearing, you know, we wear, and we're still doing that. Thank God we are still doing that, but, uh, but uh, um, a lot of events were canceled, uh, including our Bratwurst Festival. Um, people kind of pulled together, you know, and we, it's what we had to do. Um, to get us through that, and uh, we were looking forward to 2021 as a year where we're going to transition back to normal, whether we're going to get back to the same way we were in 2019. You know, I think we will. It may not be this year, but I do want to single out a few people, and you can read a little bit about them. Um, I go into greater detail in my address. People that are have rose the occasion that are still rising the occasion. How about the Crawford County Board of Health, led by Kate Seifert? What a tremendous staff uh, they have out there, you know, trying to keep people safe and then do their regular business too. And then, um, you know, now they're doing vaccines. So they get now these vaccine takes two shots, you know, the Moderna and the Pfizer. So so they're they're trying to schedule one shot, then all the people now come up for their second shot. So these folks are exhausted i'm sure but you know you go out there and there's a smile on their face their collective face i admire them so much so if you get a chance drop them a card you know please just tell them how much you appreciate them avita hospital uh, they cleared out their hospital back in march april waiting for an onslaught of cases um, didn't come right then but certainly it came later in the year and uh they had to worry about their own health and the health of their families, but you know there was a great financial cost. So we thank Jerry Marasco. What a wonderful job you did. Uh, I want to single out the school systems. Our superintendents were fantastic. Our teachers, our staffs. Um, 
keeping kids in school, how important that is. We don't have that issue here locally like a lot of the big cities have where they haven't had school. Um, our guys rose to the occasion and he knew it was about keeping safe but about keeping the kids in school too. Retail workers. You know, every time a door opened you failed, you, you put yourself at risk. So thank you for all you did showing up at the job, especially restaurants, fast food places. Uh, how about grocery store workers? Wow. Um, trying to keep in those stock shelves and keep, how about the toilet paper shortage? <laughs> You know, um, keeping us fed. Try to imagine that if the grocery stores would have closed. So uh, we thank all of those places for those the heroes. And those folks, you know, don't make as much money as some other jobs too. First responders, Bucyrus Fire Department, Bucyrus Police Department, Portsmouth Ambulance, uh, Kirk Williamson EME, from EM, uh, EMA, Judd Kander, they led the, the uh, organization of county response, especially on what's called PPE, protective equipment, uh, everything we were planning to do uh, to make sure that the county responded for your safety. There was a lot of work going on behind the scenes. Um, a couple of more wise funeral homes, a lot of funerals this year. Uh, Munz Pernstall, uh, Dave Pernstall, Dave Wise, Nate, all this did a tr not a very easy year to deal with grieving families. Uh, didn't have the support of friends and family, so God bless you for that. Uh, social agencies, Rotary, Kiwanis, um, Salvation Army, um, Holy Trinity, um, Community Kitchen, uh, Pastor Rebon, Mrs. Rebon, and I know I'm, I'm forgetting somebody. All the everybody that helped to contribute and helped to fund. Uh, when things were going very uncertain. I, I want to get uh, Ohio Mutual Insurance Group came up with a huge donation early on. Um, oh man, thank you for that. You, uh, we have a lot of, so many good people that uh, goodness came out of, of uh, your, your community in my opinion is, is only as good as um, how good people are under difficult times. Bucyrus proved that it's got what it takes. I want to thank the governor, lieutenant governor, um, did a fantastic job with uh, uh, transparency, keeping us informed of what was going on and calm leadership. Uh, um, you know, he did, no one's ever you know, been in that situation. So I think what you did there was keeping us calm and uh, getting us through this. Uh, you, you'll be remembered forever. Um, the Trump administration, you know, what they did for Operation Warp Speed. Less than a year, we've got vaccines, and they seem to be working very well. A lot of things we've got to learn yet, obviously, on their efficacy and for the length of time, but everything's pointing in the right direction. And, uh, boy, since we're talking about the uh, polit politicians, what a, what a year politically it was. My goodness, uh, my lifetime, and I know probably yours too, we haven't seen anything like it. So, And, uh, and then we had... The issue uh, with uh, the, the killing of George Floyd thrown in there, and uh, it was a difficult, difficult time for the country. The country erupted in the summer. Uh, we had our own um, peaceful demonstration here. Uh, many of the demonstrations throughout the country were not peaceful. There was a lot of damage, and uh, well, I was so proud of uh, our folks. Uh, we had a large group of folks uh, met at the Millennium Park and marched to down South Sandusky and turned around and uh, very, very proud of everybody and nonviolence and, um, you know, and then doing, doing a very good job and our law enforcement did a very good job being well organized. Um, that's basically all I wanted to say about the year. There's more I've said in there. You can look at it. Um, I could have talked forever on this, but I want to go back and just go over now for a few minutes and give you some of the highlights of last year. And, uh, and then go uh, talk a little bit about where we're heading to. Um, number one was the Pines Reservoir. I guess we call it formerly the Pines Reservoir because it's no longer a reservoir. Uh, back in the 1970s, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources uh, notified us that there were problems with the dam. And, and through many administrations, and it was actually uh, uh, the, there was a vote uh, back in the 80s to actually uh, authorize the city to collect funds to fix the dam, that got turned down. 
basically was kicked down the road. We got a letter early on in our administration, I think 2016, that, uh, hey, look, you're next on the list, we're coming for you. So we put a plan in gear to, to see what we could do and, and, and get that fixed. And fortunately, that's behind us now. Um, that reservoir is no longer uh, useful as water. It's not safe drinking water. And of course, we have Othwaite and Riley Reservoir. We didn't need it. So we were ordered to unhook that from our water system, which we did. So uh, for safety of the dam, we actually had to uh, get a plan and was signed off from ODNR. We actually breached one of the banks there so it never fills up completely again. And uh, that got approved finally. Uh, they signed off in uh, October, November of last year. And uh, city council's uh, studying plans for maybe the rehabilitation of that area to turn it into some kind of a park. So that's gonna be addressed in the coming years too. The EPA separation has been a, an issue ongoing for the city. Uh, we signed a, what's called a consent decree back in 2016 with the federal EPA. It's a long story, we won't even get into that, but all that construction out on Hopley and uh, Southern Avenue and um, uh, Robin Hood Heights, that area is, uh, was part of that program where we actually are disconnecting our, uh, our storm water from our sewers, which will uh, actually, the, that storm water then eventually will go right into the river and keep us from having overflows. And that's what that whole thing was about. So that, that bit that you're paying for on your utility bill, that's called the EPA fee or, or stormwater fee, that goes into that long-term plan. And we're pretty much getting finished with our first uh, program. Our, our, eight, our uh, engineering agency, Arcadis, who we work with, is now we're working on a plan for our next one. We've been very aggressive on it in the first one. Um, we're very happy about the results so far, but there's still a ways to go. We hired a new engineering firm, a new one and an old one. Um, McKeever and Associates, led by Lynn McKeever and a uh, longtime Bucyrus resident, is our new engineering firm. We thank Branstetter and Carroll. They did a fantastic job for us. We are excited to have uh, Lynn and uh, all of his associates on board. We saw Safety Forces leadership change. Chief Dave Kepke uh, retired after pretty close to 30 years of service with the city and is now uh, the uh, administrator of North Central State College's uh, uh, Police Academy. And, you know, Chief was beloved here. And uh, he will be missed, and uh, as will our, our fire chief, Chief Jay Keller, longtime a dedicated public servant, and uh, he retired. So. Captain Neil Ossenheimer assumed the uh, duties of chief, and Chad Schwimley, Captain Chad Schwimley, has become our acting chief, and uh, he continues as that. Okay. Uh, we bought a new fire truck. Maybe you saw that in the news. That one that replaced was 30 years old. I mean, it was in bad shape, so it's now engine one. We brought that into the service this year. We also were able to buy a new um, ambulance this year and that money uh, was actually paid for by what's called the federal cares act so it didn't cost the city taxpayers a dime so we have a brand new fire truck and a brand new ambulance which will save us a lot of money over time speaking of the cares act the federal government um, in response to some of the issues that local governments were having with uh, and, and actually business owners were having with uh, the effects of the pandemic they voted uh, to uh, br um, bring the, what's called the CARES Act into uh, existence. And we were allotted so much money during the year that we were able to use for things that would help make us more safe uh, from the virus. And so we use a lot of it on uh, touch-free doors, new installation of touch-free uh, toilets and urinals at different facilities throughout town, uh, uh, touch-free radio read, um, water meters, the ambulance, so all those things that things that uh, are going to make us safer as a community. So when you come up to City Hall, when you come in, the doors now are touch-free. You'll see a little spot on the door, uh, whether it's income tax or any of the offices. Look for that little, just, just put your hand over it. Very cool, very cool. So the, we did have uh, some news about General Electric. They were sold uh, to a company called Savant, and uh, 
They've been in the news lately. They had they were doing a lot of hiring. We felt pretty darn good about everything. Uh, they did note make a notice in January called the Warren Notice that uh, they were planning to close a line. That Warren Notice was is required by federal uh, guidelines, and they were giving us a 60-day notice that they were going to close a line. Uh, about 80 jobs were um, at risk there. Uh, at this point, at this recording right now, the union and um, the uh, uh, management of General Electric Savant uh, is in negotiation. We hope and pray that uh, something can be worked out because we need the LED line here. We need those jobs here. They're critically important. It's a long-term relationship. I've toured that several times and I come away every time with the pride that those workers have in the plate, have in the place. So, I mean, they even have a you know, a bumper sticker that you put on Bucyrus Proud. You can you can just feel it. So, help and pray that they can get it worked out. We need those. Um, we need those jobs. Bucyrus Pre Precision Tech, uh, one of the original uh, tenants of the Ohio Crossroads Industrial Park, uh, gave us a notice they were going to be closing this summer. Um, at the height, they were over 400 jobs. They were down now to around 100 type of jobs, but those will still be jobs that we will need to fill. Um, they will be missed too. We thank them for what they did for the community. And uh, I know the, and, uh, the good news is um, the economy, local economy is much better than uh, we had ever anticipated. We anticipated initially there's going to be a huge loss in tax revenue. Uh, that did not materialize. Our revenue was down a little bit this year, excuse me, in 2020. Um, but Boy, it could have been so much worse. And as things opened up again in May, when the governor allowed that, uh, things took off. And our unemployment is, uh, is down significantly. And many of our businesses are hiring. There's lots of jobs out there. So if you're looking for a job, it's out there waiting for you. The part of the CARES Act money was a, a program called the uh, Paycheck Protection Plan, PPP. And that was eligible to small businesses. And it's actually had two cycles. The first cycle, had what a wider cycle was open, everybody, uh, every business, I think, under 250 employees. The second cycle that came out in January is open to smaller uh, uh, employment, but also you have to, you have to show, uh, you have to show loss of revenue for one quarter last year. Your accountant will know all about that. Very important that you take advantage of these forgivable loans, and um, man, these are these are fantastic. Uh, you can see we have lost up a few businesses, but we also have opened a few businesses too. And so, uh, if if everything keeps moving in the right direction, I have a, a really good hope so that we're going to weather this storm pretty well. So, um, another new business that was just announced that we've been working with for about four years uh, is Aldi. And uh, many of you shop at Aldi when you go out of town. It's a very unique little grocery store. And uh, I, I actually uh, read an article years ago that they were uh, opening 800 new stores in the United States and uh, immediately reached out to them through some friends that knew some friends that knew some friends and got some contacts. So, boy, we worked really hard to get them here. We are so excited about that. And, you know, we did. there was a lot of pieces that had to fit together with the zoning and the annexation and uh, they are going to do well there and also you know it took care of an eyesore for us that was in pretty bad shape so we uh, we welcome them I, they have a uh, we thank uh, Rob Ratliff and uh, Landon Hill for their great work on that and I think before the snow they were planning to open in June um, I'm not sure you know what that deal is but they're gonna be opening pretty soon Waterline expansion is, uh, there's just a few more things here. Waterline expansion is important to us. Uh, and uh, we are going out Stetzer Road uh, very soon. Those plans will be sent to the EPA, Ohio EPA, for approval very quickly. A lot of interest out that way. We're also talking to the village of Nevada. And that uh, we got a good, uh, good thing going there. We think everything's going to work out. And that'll be in about... Uh, not till 2023 we're thinking of on that one uh, we have a brand new water treatment facility and it's it's got excess water and so we want to sell outside the city limits and council was able to uh, change our rates out structure and that it's going to make all the difference so 
Um, we hired a, uh, a new access channel coordinator slash communications director, and he's behind the camera right now, Mr. John Rostash, longtime city employee. He was in the zoning department, and he hit the ground running. He replaced Gary Hess. Gary Hess uh, was here for many, many years and uh, had to resign because of some serious health issues, and uh, uh, we wish Gary the best. Uh, we welcome John. Uh, new equipment uh, that we are going to, uh, we're working on because of the CARES Act money was there, um, and uh, that's going to be, a, we're trying to do our very best to get us back on the air, our, our, our uh, community station, and um, it's a little more complicated dealing with spectrum and, you know, so we're trying to get, uh, get some response out of them, but we have new equipment ready to go. I think we uh, worked, reached out to them and got some communication with them today. So look for some good things to happen. We will keep you informed on that. So thanks again to, to Gary, and, and John's doing a fantastic job, and he's also in charge of the Facebook and YouTube and the website. So, so much there. The Bicentennial. Wow, lots going on there. Um, Kelly Patterson, Randy Fisher, Rhonda Roll. I can't. So many good people are involved in this. We've, we've, uh, the Norton family. Denny and Sue Norton kicked us off with a large donation, and I also uh, want to thank all the other folks that have donated to it. Our, our largest donation so far has been for Brad Murdoff at First Federal. He kicked us off, and we're going to be using that for our events. Uh, we've got a lot of good events, and then we have a legacy project which you know about. Which, we're working on acquiring that flood area uh, uh, with uh, at the ice plant and uh, with the old Freddy's restaurant. I'm not sure. We're going to go, you know, we've we've got an agreement on the ice plant, whether we're able to uh, able to uh, acquire Freddy's restaurant. That's We're working on it, but I, I've heard it was sold. They were, we were told it was sold. We'll see what happens there. And, uh, you know, we're, the idea is we're going to turn it into green space. The whole idea is to get folks out in the community, walking and have places to go and enjoying the parks. Stay tuned for all that. The website is bucyrus2021.com. Bucyrus2021. You can see the beautiful logo that was designed here. And we're very excited. It's going to be a great year. Uh, COVID-19 is, is delayed some of that. Uh, some of the things we're going to start in late last year, but... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get everything in. I promise you. Um, I want to just close here. Just uh, a couple things that are dear to dear to my heart. Uh, you uh, might know uh, the parks issues. I love parks. I love the city to look good. We have to attract young families to stay and live here, work here. So what does that take? It takes good jobs, right? And it takes amenities like an attractive community, shopping and. Um, goods, tree-lined streets, and sidewalks, all that types of things. Um, our population has been declining and for years, and uh, we had census last year. I'm not sure how it came out, but uh, it, it's slow growth uh, has serious effects on your tax revenues, the ability to provide safety forces. I mean, all city services, if your tax revenue is not growing, it, it can be very difficult to keep the same level. Um, the budgets have to be watched very carefully. Same with the school systems. You know, all these, we just, a, a, a community that's growing is thriving. So we have to start with that. We were able to invest in some things I, uh, I think, thought were very important. Our uh, contribution to the Crawford County Partnership, which becomes our um, economic development wing. They work very hard with community um, jobs, attracting jobs working with workers to make sure the jobs and the fact the jobs that are available and the skills match up they're doing a great job over there but we couldn't afford to have our own um, uh, economic development there's no way that would be in several hundred thousand so we invest fifty thousand dollars we invest a little over twenty thousand dollars in to make your streets and parks more attractive we are uh we haven't done a lot here in this community for probably 40, 50 years about planting trees. We've just been chopping them, not replacing them. So, boy, that's gonna that's gonna hurt. So, in the last uh, several years, this actually I just found out we were this is the fourth year in a row we've been named Tree City USA, which is quite an honor. And that's this just shows you that we care about our environment. We care about 
looking nice, all the value of what trees do for the community, and I hope that continues well into the future. We, um, we got to make sure that we keep on that path to making this place as, as good as it was for us. And it doesn't happen automatically. So, so I hope you're all with me on that. Um, one of the areas that I've been very uh, frustrated with, I thought when, we, when I took over that we would be able to hire a parks a superintendent and increase our parks budget. Well, the reality of the fact is once we get uh, uh, our revenue and pay for safety forces and general government, it's, there's just nothing left there. So what we do in the parks budget is, is basically we're able to keep the park mowed, staffed on the weekends, you know, have somebody there for a restaurant, but you know, we, uh, we don't really have uh, enough of a budget there. So I, 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 uh, I, 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 I think parks and getting outside is critical to our health. The, the, the ability to get outside is proven. Research is showing how good it is for your health. Just take a walk in the park. How good it is to reduce stress. Uh, read some of the scientific essays on that. It's an incredible uh, benefit to your health. So you got it. We got to just get everybody outside. Last year was a tremendous year of, of use. Even though we're supposed to social distance. My goodness, people were out in Allmiller Park in droves. They just wanted to get outside, and, and I hope that continues in 2022. We added, we opened our pool back up. Uh, pickleball courts uh, that Kiwanis helped us to get open there. Um, Mike Collect Woods. Um, so many amenities that we do that ha are supported by other people. Uh, when we have to go to uh, open, uh, when we have to go to repair or buy new equipment, uh, we have to basically go out and borrow money because we don't have a parks fund. So I'm, I'm going to make a very important proposal here. I, I want you to consider, I want uh, city council to consider putting a small levy, income tax levy, on the ballot this fall. Uh, I, I, th I think we are going to be a better community if we can improve our parks and keep uh, keep them up to date and add amenities, playground equipment as we need. Um, and so I'm proposing to uh, have voters an option to increase our income tax by 0.0125%. Now right now it's 2%. So I, that would put it as, at, as basically as 2.125%. Now that extra uh, 0.125 percent would cost the average home about forty dollars a year roughly but all, everything then in the parks becomes is free which which remains free now that would allow us to do a couple things have funds for a parks director so we can have uh, uh, programs for children uh, it would allow us to buy equipment it would allow us to um, uh, repair the pools as needed um, the basketball courts and any of that stuff that we struggle to do right now, and so uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we can we can get that done. It's a very small amount, and that would really take make a difference in this community. Many communities have it. And that would be de that would be uh, dedicated just to the park, and uh, you know, again, it's our uh, parks are something that attracts people, and you. You know, that's so important when people come to town, you can take them to your parks and be something we're very proud of. We are very proud of our parks now that we do, basically on a shoestring budget. The other thing is the downtown district. Um, you know, having a business there for many years, and I, I love the downtown. When people come through Route 4 uh, and they see our, our beautiful downtown, our square, our murals, it's impressive to them. Uh, so we cannot rely on that uh, the way it looks. We have to uh, make sure our storefronts are in good shape, our sidewalks are in good shape, uh, that it looks crisp and it comes uh, when we come through town. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm exploring an idea of uh, maybe reaching out uh, to, to look into some kind of a revitalization. I'd love to have some green areas down there. There's not many green areas. There's a lot of asphalt and concrete. Uh, besides the square and the art park. So I've already had uh, a walking tour with our Ohio Department of Natural Resources, uh, Representative Stephanie Miller, about possible 
uh, some things we can do there. And let's let's really really guard jealously our downtown, how beautiful it is, because downtown is is that's like your smile for the whole city and the sidewalks are there they're so it's like your front porch so we we have so many good events there the bratwurst festival and the first fridays and car shows man they all come to downtown they love it there we get so many good compliments oh so in, in closing then thank you for your attention um i want to thank our administrative team up here i think since i've been here i mean this we've got the best team we've ever had and one of the guys right behind here, uh, Mr. Rostash, Jeff Wagner, our service director extraordinaire, Kelly uh, Patterson, Landon Hill, Greg Travis. Joyce's team is so good down in the utility office. They've done a fantastic job. These people care about the city. Boy, they want to make the city better, and they are very unselfish people. Um, we look, look back about some of the lessons we learned here in 2020. Um, you know, celebrating the Bicentennial gives us a uh, time to reflect on it. Uh, think about the Nortons who came here uh, in their wagon, you know, basically 200 years ago. Uh, the bravery it took. And uh, there's times in, the, in our history that were, have been very challenging. And this last year kind of ranks up right up there in the top one. So, you know, even along with the pandemics and the depressions, I mean, we... We rise to the occasion. The people in Bucyrus do that. Um, and now we got some good stock here. We got some good people here. God has richly blessed this community. And he's blessed it a lot in 200 years. That doesn't mean we're not going to have trials. But um, the fine citizens are inspired to pull together. And this year you saw that in an unbelievable fashion. Um, Let's pray that we can continue that history of cooperation that we built. Um, building block of any set successful community is, is uh, love for each other. Um, and uh, we, we want to raise up good citizens, teach these young kids in the schools our history. And uh, churches are so important that have done that too. And it's not automatic. I mean, we have to jealously guard that. Uh, the bicentennial is a good teaching moment. So as we say goodbye to uh, 2020, uh, a difficult year and look ahead. We look ahead to in 2021 and beyond with so much hope. Uh, we want to thank God for the many blessings and, uh, and for the lessons that we've learned and the people that he's raised up to help everyone get through this. And, and the fruits that we've seen, those lessons of bear and respecting others and loving others, um, that is the seeds that have been planted that we will, Bucyrus then will be that kind of a community for all. I am so optimistic about the uh, city of Bucyrus. I, I just can't tell you how much I, pride I have in this community and um, the, the, uh, the everybody has just uh, friends of mine that live in other areas uh, they just uh, they, they have they look at this town with envy. Let's keep it that way. Thank you for all you've done and uh, looking forward to happy bicentennial year 2021 and may God continue to bless Bucyrus. We thank you for watching.